Okay, I'm going to start with uh, chapter one. Chapter one is introduction and preliminaries. Okay, so the first part we'll do is uh, go through and introduce thermodynamics and some a common definition that's used for that. Then we'll look at what defines something to be a thermodynamic system and what a control volume is. Okay. Uh, the next thing we'll look at properties and processes and cycles. So the properties are, you know, we can we'll, just from a high level, we'll start with just classification of them as either intensive or extensive. Uh, then we're going to look at the four types of uh, thermodynamic processes and then what's considered to be a cycle. Then we'll look at units. And with units, um, you know, we're going to we'll look at SI units for the most part and you know common units for uh, thermo thermodynamics and also the USCS units sum mostly we'll solve problems using uh, SI units uh, then specific volume and density we'll look at that um, density is just mass per volume and specific volume is just the inverse of that okay then with pressure um, what we're going to do is we'll look at the um, different scales of pressure and those are just dependent upon different reference points that are used. Then energy and you know energy's basic definition is ability to do work and temperature and temperature is just you can think about it as like the average kinetic energy associated with um, particles in that system. Um, another way to, to look at it is like coldness or hotness of objects. Okay, continuing on. Here's a uh, common definition used for uh, thermodynamics, just to define thermodynamics. You can think about it as energy, it's conversion effect on substances or devices. Uh, you can think about it as like Energy study of energy transfer, um, which is another definition. Um, in this case, you could also think about the problems that you're going to work on and how to classify them. The author chose to classify them in these different areas or different types of problems or, that you're going to study um, as you go through or different systems. You can think about it in terms of an entire system. You can think about it you know, studying problems as behaviors and properties of substances. Okay, so and these gives you some. These give you some. He gives you some examples or provides some examples of that. Uh, you can also think about it in terms of characteristics of a device or a system. All right. So you know, for the most part, as we go through the problems, you know, they'll fall within um, one of these subject areas. Okay, continuing on. First thing is we want to look at is this idea of a thermodynamic system and what control volumes are. And actually, we're going to look at two different types of control volumes. And the types of control volumes, first thing we have is a cl closed control volume. Right? In this case, there's no mass being exchanged with the surroundings. Okay. So essentially, you know, as you're studying um, this system, the mass is going to stay the same, okay? So the control volume stays the same, essentially, all right? As opposed to an open control volume, mass can enter and leave the system, all right? Now, the control surface is just defined as like the enclosing boundary of that control volume. Okay, now we look at some examples. So here's some examples. Of course, in this case, you know, the entire system, the mass doesn't change. You may have some exchange between this tank and the piston. And here is like a boiler. You know, we have enclosed where you're just boiling uh, water in a, in, a, uh, in an enclosed space where you don't have any mass water that leaves or enters. And here's an example of a 
open control volume, you have a hot air balloon being inflated. So you have mass of the air coming in. And here, maybe you're filling a tank with something, water, air, let's say. So these are some examples. And then we have uh, some examples here of uh, like some complete systems like a power plant. In this case, you'll see that it contains both an open and a closed system. One is, uh, one is we have um, water, where water is just being recycled through. Okay. And the other one, which is the closed system. And we also have the open system where, you know, we have mass of air coming in, mass of the coal coming, uh, coming in. And then the total mass leaving up through the chimney and some of it being captured in the um, ash separator and gas purifier. Okay. And then we'll look at another one. Here's another one. This is a refrigeration system. Which is basically just, you know, it takes it it takes heat from the air and and then it goes through a process that four cycles of refrigeration process. And then it exchanges that heat um with the surroundings or outside one. In this case it's an actual refrigerator, you know, but if it's an air conditioner it works in the same fashion. Um if it was a heat pump, it would just be in reverse, okay? So these are the four main components of an air conditioning system or four parts of the process, which we'll look into more in detail later. Okay, continuing on. Properties, processes, and cycles. So for the most part, we're gonna be dealing with um, pure substances. So we're thinking about um, well, what a pure substance is. Basically, it's just um, has a constant, what they consider constant chemical composition. So it doesn't matter where you sample a substance; it's going to be the same no matter throughout. That's considered to be a pure substance. Okay. So we'll look at phases, and we're going to look at three three fundamental phases. There's also like plasma too, but we're not going to look at that. Um, solid liquid and vapor okay and these are going to be the phase in which a substance um, is in is going to be dependent upon temperature and pressure the next thing we'll consider is state thinking about the state of a substance um, in this case we have two things two properties or two independent properties we need to use to specify a state. And we can classify them as in intensive properties and extensive properties. And the basic idea, the basic difference between the two is for intensive properties, that's totally independent of like how much of a mass or substance that you have, okay? The quantity doesn't matter. You think about in terms of like pressure, temperature, density are, are typical examples for that. Um, for extensive properties, we're thinking about, you know, like um, the quantity of mass that we have or, you know, the volume of the mass that we have. And even, even we can think about it in terms of like energy, you know, thermal energy be an example that we would think, could consider. Then we have process, okay? So basically we're thinking about you know, we start at certain states, we define this idea of state, we started at a state, and we have some other state that we go through, and we can even think about it, you know, as a state starting at one point, and ending up with another, okay, another state. And in this case, you know, just a couple of examples, you know, you start up with some, you heat a cup of water to make it warm water, you know, what do you have? Do you, did, um, in that case, you're going to see, you know, temperature changed from when you started from, you know, whether or not, you know, you heated it enough to boil some of the water out, you might have lost some mass. So the mass could change essentially when you're in the second state okay, of that. Um, compressing air into a cylinder is another example. So in this case, you know, you're, you're increasing. If you're, um, starting with a certain mass of air in your system and you're bringing mass in to the system. So then you have initial state associated with 
um, a certain pressure. Maybe it's maybe you're you care about um, how much air pressure there is in a in a tire, and you start with initial mass and you know initial temperature of the air. Let's say inside of the tube tire tube, and in the final state after you have filled it up. You have initial temperature, initial pressure, and mass. Or no, sorry, a final temperature, final pressure, final mass inside of that tire. Okay, so these are just some examples. The key point here is that it's the state, right? Which are there are two two properties, right? That we need to, or two types of properties that we need to define for that. Okay, there may be more than just two properties, but two types of properties. Okay, continuing on. First thing is to define what a process path is. And basically it's just the sequence of states, okay, which we, we previously talked about. We talked about some basic ones just where they had two states, initial and final. But it's often the case where you'll be studying more than just two states. You'll have some intermediate states before it makes it to the final state. Okay. Now there are four different types of processes that we're going to be looking at here, okay? Uh, the first is isobaric, and this is where a process where throughout the process, the pressure is constant, right? The next is isochoric, where the volume is constant throughout the whole process. The third type is isothermal, or at least in order that I'm talking about it. And in this case, you have a constant temp temperature. The next is uh, adiabatic process. In this case, there's no heat or mass being transferred in or out of the system. We'll then continue on. We'll look at cycles. Okay. Basic definition, it's a process or process path that essentially ends back in the initial state. Okay. So you start somewhere in some state, after some sequence of states, you end back in that initial state and this process repeats over and over again. And here's some examples of that. And the first two here, actually has the same mass of water so that doesn't change it just circulates around or the 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 uh, in an air conditioning system refrigerator heat pump same thing you have a refrigerant that's circulating around it's the same mass same refrigerant uh, the last one is a little different but we have to look at the definition of that of a cycle where it says the net change of the working substance okay so in the last one you have when you're going through this process of an, a car engine where it actually is going through the four cycles two cycles depending on what type of an engine it is you're working with fuel you know you have new fuel being you know uh, coming in and mix fuel air mixture mixing together and the mass of that essentially you know it goes through the four states and goes back to the initial state. Even though it's different air and different fuel, the mass of that air fu uh, fuel combination or mixture is the same, okay? So that's when they define a cycle where that, the working substance, in this case, air fuel mixture, is gonna be the same, okay, initially, and it's the same each step throughout, even though it's a different different <laughs> molecules of air and fuel mixture, the mass of that, and, and um, essentially the substance itself is essentially the same throughout, okay? Or not throughout, but through the different parts, it's just, it repeats the same process over and over again, okay? Although there's no net change in this working substance, um, there is some energy conversion process going throughout, okay? So that's kind of the key point. No net change in the working substance, but for a cycle, but there is some net energy conversion process that is being performed throughout, okay? 
Okay, now we're continuing on. Let me talk about units. We use a lot of different units of measurement um, in this class, uh, but we can think about them in terms of types or uh, types of units. In this case, or systems of units, we have System International or the English or USCS unit systems. Um, you know, we're going to look at different things, you know, temperature, force, mass, energy. So we'll have different units for all of those. Um, and one of the things we'll do is we need to make some conversions between the SI and USCS or SI and English systems. So we'll be expected to do that. And there's actually a table in the textbook of units and uh, conversions. Okay. Uh, so there's really not much else to say about that right now, but it's something I'm sure you've already worked with in other classes where you've had to do unit conversion. So we'll do this sometimes. Most of the units we're going to deal with are SI units. I think we'll stay with the SI unit system for the most part. Okay, for we're gonna look, next look at specific volume and density. And specific volume and density are just the inverse of each other. Uh, specific volume is just volume per unit mass, while density is just mass per unit volume. Okay. And we also gave some typical values for like liquid, water, and atmosphere, and they give you approximate uh, values associated with that. And just in general, you know, if it has a high density, which just means essentially a low uh, specific volume, it's very dense. If it has a low density and high specific volume, it's a very, it's very light, light, okay? Um, so here's some examples, there's some ranges that are given for some common materials, some solids, liquids, and gases in a table. 